Well, spring is here and rosé season isn't far behind. Full Glass Wine is celebrating with a $14 million funding round and acquiring the wine subscription brand Bright Cellars. So joining me now with more is Full Glass Wine co-founder and COO Neha Kumar. Uh, Neha, welcome. Hi. Great uh, to have some wind at your back heading into the summer and even the spring. Uh, tell me more about what you're going to do with this $14 million funding. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, first things first is we're actually just taking care of some of the seller financing. But now that we've kind of put some of that behind us, we really have the opportunity to focus and to fuel our strategic growth in a, a few different areas. And I'd love to share more of that with you. What are the goals for your company? Absolutely. Well, the first and foremost right now, what we're focused on is really pushing forward on a lot of our innovative marketing campaigns. Then for next, what we're looking at is really working on our technology and utilizing our technology to increase the overall customer experience when it comes to the website, ordering products online, et cetera. And then from there, we're really focused in on our fulfillment and logistics to create an overall enhanced customer experience, thus leading to great customer satisfaction. Who is your target consumer? You know, that's a really great question because one of the things that we're very hyper-focused on is expanding out our overall customer lifecycle journey. We currently have three brands, which we're very excited about, and all three of the brands actually have a different core customer demographic. Interesting, so talk to me about what those core customers are for each brand. Absolutely. So the first one that we acquired last year in June is Wink. Wink is going to be a very specified customer segment where it is a type of demographic who are saying we're interested in wine, this is something that we want to learn more about. Having said that, we need some help with discovery and we need some help with getting nice curated packs. The next one that we have is a company called Wine Insiders. It's a little bit more of a seasoned group where they've had the opportunity to try wines from around the world and now they're saying, we understand there's a lot of this out there, but we want some additional help with curation, but we want the convenience of things being delivered directly to our door. And then Bright Sellers, the third one that we acquired just right now that you have brought up, is one that is looking for subscription customers that have an understanding of wine, but they still just want a little bit more TLC to get the curated packs. Mm -hmm. Each one is a different age group, a different demographic, and one of the great things about what we currently have in place is we have so much data. We're very, very data rich because all three of these companies have been around for an extended period of time, which is phenomenal. What is the health of the industry right now in terms of how consumers are faring and the demand that's out there? And it, it's a really good question that you're asking because a lot of people are talking about that in direct-to-consumer in general, not just direct-to-consumer wine. If you're comparing direct-to-consumer from 2020, 21, 22, people might say that the market is down overall. But in reality, what you wanna do is you wanna look at each industry and you want to compare it back to before the COVID time. Of course, there was going to be a big blip during COVID. People were at home. So if you're going to take forecasts and compare it to that time, it's a little bit hard. But if you go back to 2018, 19, that makes it a little more realistic and people are still shopping online. Talk to me about the average price point that consumers can expect to pay across your various brands. Absolutely. You can go anywhere from $8 to $25. Um, and then it also just depends if consumers are going to be doing subscription packs, if they're going to be getting something a little bit more regularly, because there's different pricing um, packages that are available for consumers. Interesting. Uh, so if someone wants to sign up and get a delivery, is there anything that they need to know about maximizing that experience? I would say join in, get online, have fun with the process. And in regards to the actual packages, there's a variety of different ones. And our goal here as we continue to grow full glass wine mm -hmm. is to be able to meet the various needs of our customers. So even if it's different customer segments, even if it's to be growing it as a customer through their life cycle journey, they might want to go through and do something different because your profile, your, your taste changes, what you might want from wine. So our goal is that we're able to provide those through additional brands as people grow, just like wine. Wine is dynamic, right? It's constantly changing and evolving and so are consumer preferences and tastes. 
Uh, you had talked about that some of this new funding, $14 million, will go to the financing of the sellers. Uh, we had seen, obviously, in some cases with some harsh weather conditions over the past few years that I think at times uh, the harvesting of wine and certainly sellers have been impacted. How is that financing trying to help the sellers? So this specifically has to do with the companies that we acquired. Right, so seller financing essentially is a different way to purchase companies where it's almost a, we're gonna pay for part of the company now and for part of the company later. Got it, and in terms of the health of where the wine is being sourced from. Gotcha. What is the health of that? You know, it's very interesting because there's a lot of different producers that we've been dealing with and we're also dealing with some production shops and so far at this point in time, things have been very good because we have a lot of long-standing relationships with various different producers around the country and the world. Mm -hmm. And what do you want to see the company grow over time to be? Oh, we want to make it the one-stop shop for all things wine, where consumers can come try and learn about wine. And hopefully, again, as their profile and taste change, our company will be able to meet those needs for them as well. All right, Neha Kumar, co-founder and CEO of Full Glass Wine. I'm Neha, thank you. Thank you so much for having me.